and they're off and running in the 37th running of the Sam Davis. It's Saturday, February the 11th. I'm out here at Gulfstream where there are three graded stakes on the card today, including the second of three grade ones for the meet. And it is Tampa Festival premiere day as they prepare for the Tampa Bay Derby in mid-March when I will be there. But it's been a great week of racing so far. On Wednesday, I came out here to enjoy the weather and I had three selections on the day. The first one was in the third, a starter optional claimer on the turf where I liked class and cash. Forces they swing for home. Up top, the leader class. Class and catch. Wire to wire. Wow, did that turn out just like I thought? And paid a whopping $760. Almost $40 on the first bet of the day and of the week. Nice. No, yeah, wire to wire for my first winner. My second selection was in the fourth. It was the just one more stakes. Like Todd Pletcher's returning starter, third day was my bet of the day. Texas spread the one to reel in. Here's third day launching an attack on the outside. Second, they moved away from Basha. Then Keith. Yeah. They win it. Third day. Oh yeah, cashed for sixty dollars, and I closed out the day with my third winner in the seventh, a claiming event on the turf where I like the two to five favorite Stay Safe Kitten. just up in time and I had three wins and a profit on the day. The next day, Thursday, my first selection was in the opener, a maiden claiming event going eight furlongs and I liked Into the Future. He looked so good I upped the bet, confidently handled to the stretch. Into the future, trying to seal the deal. Howland Mad Smith is running out of time in real estate. It will be the Into the Future to win it as the first race favorite. Into the Future by almost two in the end. Nice winner. I came right back in the fourth with Bowtown Cat, who went right to the front under a hand ride. And it closed out Thursday in the ninth race, a non winners of the two lifetime. Seven and a half furlongs on the turf. I've had many issues with Julian Leperu riding on my horses, but today he gave Leonardo da Vinci a great ride, edged out into the stretch. Jacala set after him second, Leonardo da Vinci between horses third, then stay in cruise. In deep stretch, Leonardo da Vinci or Jacala will settle it. It's Leonardo da Vinci with the lead, Jacala is second, Leonardo da Vinci with a good trip to win. Jacala second. Power and that's three wins on Thursday. I closed out the weekday racing in the opener on Friday. I like Dancing in the Heat under Javier Castellano was the favorite right to the front. Inside the final furlong and Dancing in the Heat is strong up front. Ravello's boy tried him but was only second best to Dancing in the Heat who wins by a length. Ravello came back in the second, should have bet the Daily Double. Number two, Dubai Bob on the turf. Pressed through sizzling fractions, 21 and 2, 44 and 2 on the turf, and as they turn for home. On the inside, Dubai Bob tries to fight on from third and Starship Mars. Eighth of a mile to go. Dubai Bob is tough up front. Our independence is gaining, but not very quickly. It's Dubai Bob, gamest of all. He moves back away. Dubai Bob, sharp in victory. Oh, yeah. That's eight winners this week from just 13 races and four second place. 12 for 13 in the exacta. It's been a great week so far. Let's see how today turned out here at Gulfstream on Saturday. Picked my first winner of the day here Saturday at Aqueduct in the opener there. Made in special weight going a mile 70 yards. And I liked number four, Duquesne Whistle. It was three to one in the program, but I expected him to be bet down because trainer Linda Rice, just insane off the charts. 42% with second time maidens. 
right to the front, confidently handled to the turn. Four to one challenger caught him, stretch duel. To the finish on the outside of Duquesne Whistle is my boy Tate, and my boy Tate has taken the lead narrowly as Duquesne Whistle continues to battle on as they pass the eighth pole. On the outside, it's my boy Tate. On the inside, it's Duquesne Whistle. Now, nothing between them with less than a sixteenth of the finish. Duquesne Whistle, my boy Tate. Good finish here in the opener, and it is a head photo finish. Oh, the head bob, I watched it five times in slow motion. Everybody around me said it was a six. Hey, it was the four. Duquesne Whistle, first winner of the day. It was even money, should have got four dollars. But the seven left the gate early. He got DQ'd. So my price went down to 370. But I'll take it. The third at Gulfstream was my first bet locally. It was a claiming event going a mile and everybody liked number four, Venom Girl. She'd won three in a row and just got claimed by Barn that wins 29% first off the claim. Right to the front, press the pace. On the turn, the jockey said, hey, let's go. Long gone. Venom Girl has this to throw away. She's opened a four-length lead. Toward the inside, Dancing Cool is now rallying into second. Unknown is back third, then kicking in. Three sixteenths to go, and this one's over. Venom Girl, well back for good reason. She's long gone. She's Unknown, gamely hanging on to second with Dancing Cool trying to catch her. To the wire, Venom Girl's on wrapped up with Venom Girl! Tripled the bet on Venom Girl. Thought about up in the bet, but not at two to five. I'll take it. The fourth at Gulfstream was an entry level allowance night number four, C Cloud. C Cloud had won her debut and then came back in an allowance race going seven furlongs, battled through fast fractions and then weakened. Cut back to six and a half furlongs today. Just pressed the pace into the turn. Fourth is Curlin's image as they turn for home. Up top, C Cloud set down for the drive by Luis Saez. From area second, Jenny's dancer ducks to the inside. Late run from Kyle's Marigold for a share. Final furlong, C Cloud is still there. Jimmy's dancer, Camaria second and third. C Cloud, my second winner. Three wins. today at Aqueduct was their third race, the Haynesfield, going eight and a half furlongs on the main inner track. One of the things about Aqueduct in the wintertime is it's a really quirky surface and horses either love it or they don't. And a lot of times you can find the winner if you can find a horse that has run well there before over that quirky inner surface. Well, Todd Pletcher sent out what looked to be the odds on favorite today and send it in. And send it in had been out over the inner track five times with four wins. And at this distance, he'd been out six times with five wins. Duh, looked much the best. He was chasing the loose on the leader into the stretch, looked to have him measured, and then uh-oh, the leader wouldn't go away. Head bobbing finish, photo finish. Now they're in the stretch, and it is Fox Rules trying to hold off, send it in. Fox Rules leads by a length, send it in, driving on the outside. Fox Rules down at the rail, send it in on the outside. Fox Rules and send it in. They come down to the finish. Fox Rules, send it in on the outside. It's going to be a photo finish. Too tight to call. Oh, yeah, the photo came up. I'm the winner. 30 to win the bet of the day. That's four wins in a row and two tight photos in New York. Woo! The sixth at Tampa was my first winner on the undercard on their big preview day. I'd run second with a Todd Pletcher maiden in the first race today. But in this race, I liked Egyptian Hero. He'd drawn a $1 million sales bid at the Fazek Tipton sales as the son of champion pioneer of the Nile. And perhaps it was a clue that he wasn't going to run well or wasn't geared up here at Gulfstream when Edgar Zayas was named. He'd been working strongly for this one and he drew the far outside post. Set the pace wide down the back stretch and through the turn. Challengers came to him at the top of the stretch. Egyptian hero has the lead at Matador. He's up to challenge now. 
Racing along second, slick as ice, tries to battle back third. Blue Moon Diamond is there toward the rail fourth. There into the stretch, it's still Egyptian Hero in front. Anadar continues to grind away on the outside second. Two and a half lengths farther back. Six-sided bling on the outside third. A late run by Blue Sky Cowboy. But down to the wire, it's Egyptian Hero. Double the bet. Got back over $20. That's win number five today. Second at the fairgrounds was an eight furlong turf stakes race. It was their feature. It was for three-year-olds and nearly all of them were stretching out for the first time. I liked what looked to be the favorite. Number two, Stallion Heiress had earned a huge buyer when drawing off uh, an 84 sprinting on the turf. And DRF handicapper Marcus Hirsch gave rave reviews, which is unusual. If she could run back to that number, she'd be long gone. Gates open and boom! Right to the front by nearly 10 lengths. So they turn for home, the riders Stallion looking around. Harris coming down to the final furlong, and Mitchell takes a confident peek back, and Stallion Eris is rolling through this fairground stretch. Hot shot Anna now gains into the exacta. Rum goes third, super duper sky. We draw back to picturesque, and Stallion Eris, the exchange rate Philly, Stallion Eris steaming away from them. It's another Hotshot. winner in a feature race. The seventh at Gulfstream was an entry-level allowance, and I liked lightly raced Barack, number two, with Paco Lopez. Last time out, the Shadwell Stables turf runner had found himself on the lead through a soft pace. I thought Paco would stalk the lead. Oh, Paco's too clever for them. Right to the front. So they came out of the far turn. They started to make a move, but Paco had something left. The top of the stretch. Barack has the lead. Trying to get through inside his flying bullet down the outside in Conquest Sandman. Off cover Nessie. Into the drive. Juarez comes off the fence with flying bullet. <laughs> The seventh at Tampa was an allowance race on the turf. I thought there were two that looked far superior talent-wise to the rest. I went with Christophe Clement's wit, number eight. The jockey was very smart, just like Paco last time out. Set a slow pace, 48 and change, 112 and change. Field tried to make a run at him. He said, no way. Outside now, racing along second. Unfazed is third. Way out on the outside, street strut fourth, but down to the wire. It's whip. Handled beautifully up front throughout, and charging late is unfazed, but it's whip. Woman, 620, double the bet over 30 bucks. Woo!